Welcome to a brand new City Skylines Let's Play. I'm going to teach you how to play City Skylines in 2023. So I know many of you first and foremost are going to say you just started a new map. Well, on the screen in front of you, I had a green screen of doom. Never save over it because otherwise it is a corrupt file and well, you're going to have to start a new city. So let's reintroduce Ryan Fitzpatrick. He is our Bitcoin thousandaire that is looking to start his own city skyline city. So he decided to go to a real estate agent in the Northeast of the United States. And he was looking for a just kind of, you know, just a, a rugged place to start off a lake. So he wanted to have that, that water view, but you know, just kind of in the forest. And so the real estate agent said Oracle Lake, in the from the new city skylines plaza and promenades dlc is the best way to go and the reason why the real estate agent said this is the best is because you can see the natural resources it has oil or forest and farming industry and it does have water access so this way you're getting a little bit of everything and you have all the city skylines dlcs the next it has all the outside connections you can possibly have in city skylines and then on the screen in front of you, I did change the theme on the map itself just to give it, you know, a more custom theme feel. So overall, Mr. Ryan Fitzpatrick chose the Oracle Lake and here it is on the screen in front of you. As we're entering Oracle Lake, well, we, we want to rename the town first and foremost, but when you're first starting, you know, when... Ryan Fitzpatrick was first looking at this map. He did not have a city planner. And what he wanted to do though, was he wanted to look around the map and just see what options he had. So you can see we have mountains, we have a river, we have train access. We have a little bit of everything in the city skylines map. So in front of you, what we're trying to figure out is how to lay out our city. And you can see there is a highway entrance and possibly we probably want to put the downtown area right here in this part of the map. So we're just doing some basic map, you know, just city skylines layout and design or what we're going to do in the future. Now, what I normally would do is I would check out our natural resources. But if you look in the info views on the left hand side, you're going to see nothing is open and we actually can't check that yet. So now that we're kind of stuck, let's look at our tile. So what we want to do immediately with our tile is we want to create a right hand turn and we want to make sure that we have an area for our industry, which we want to put on the right side and we want to put our residential on the left. So now that we have that in place, what we need to do is we need to start our city skyline city. So at the bottom of the screen, you're going to notice the tool belt is completely empty and we can't actually build anything. And as you can see on the roads, um, you know, ever since the new city skylines update from this past DLC, you do have a couple road options. I will say that they do give you a couple road options like the ones in front of you and those double, you know, those sort of medium sized roads, but the actual medium sized roads and the large roads, they are completely blank and you can't use them. So this is one of the questions is going to be like, well, how do I unlock some of these roads? Like, how do I start my city? I only have one road options. So what we're going to do first is we're going to grab that two lane road and make that little, little four unit build. And then you can see on the screen in front of you, things unlocked. So what we'll do is we will completely demolish that road and we're going to scroll down and you can see, Hey, we have a two lane one way road. We have a, you know, road with path or road with sidewalks. And then we have medium sized roads. And now we have a large road option. We still don't have the highway yet. That comes later on in the game. But anyways, just want to let you know that it does create more options as time goes on. So what we need to do is we need to build a city layout. And what you're going to notice is we want a one way in and a one way out of our system. Now in 2021, the way to go, if any of you have ever seen my city skylines videos, you're going to know that I love using roundabouts, but in 2023, a lot of users such as CityZilla, cities by Diana and the best and brightest, Biffa, 
they all use this right hand turn system and i just figured that you know instead of doing the same boring roundabout let's do the right hand turn so what we're going to do is we are creating the right hand turn on the screen in front of you and what we want to do is we put a road off the right hand turn and we eventually do need to connect that up so what we're doing right here is we're going to go 12 units to the right and we want to maintain that gap so that we have a good you know on and it's not an on and off ramp but just a good amount of distance between a couple of our main roads to get in and out of our city so right there we have our basic right hand turn set up which again very 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 simple so what we're going to do next is we want to create a really nice looking right hand turn so what we're going to do is at the bottom of the screen we're going to use the curve tool and what you're going to notice is that there is a blue dot and a blue line and then we're going to click left click and then right click onto the road so very 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 simple way to do that honestly it took what a matter of two seconds now if you do have city skylines mods and have the network multi-tool go to the curved road mod and what you could do is basically the same thing and then you're just gonna hit enter and bing bang boom every you know that was also a very easy turn and it looks really well done now the only issue we have here is that tiny bridge but we can easily 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 upgrade that road so that'll take about two seconds and what we also want to do is we want to make sure we upgrade the road so that it's all leaving because we don't want two entrance two roads going into the city and let nobody out so what you'll do is hit that blue exclamation mark at the bottom of the screen and then right click that road and that bing bang boom we have an on and off ramp for our city skyline city so now that we have the right hand turn well to be fair we we, we have the right hand turn in place so i mean i guess we're done right yeah i guess we're done so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually expand out the right hand turn by 25 uh we're, we're gonna try to go as far as we can until we get to that cliff now just as a um how do i put this just as a disclaimer, right now we do not have any terrain editing tools that comes after a tiny town. So right now you're going to notice we have some trees in the way. Now I'm going to show you later on how to get rid of those trees by using the City Skylines Move It mod. But for now, again, we're not going to bulldoze every single one of these trees. I honestly just think that um, that would take forever. So now that we've expanded our right hand turn, what we want to do is we want to add in just one more. So it's 12 units. So we're going to try to add another intersection within our um, city skylines right hand turn. Now we're not trying to create massive, you know, not, not creating, uh, not massive, but like a number of them. Like we don't want to create too many intersections to where the, the traffic will crisscross and stop and we don't want to create too much of a crazy grid and you know just if you create two if you create the intersections too close together the traffic is just gonna jam up and then you're gonna just it just doesn't work like where I'm placing or almost placing these fake roads you don't want your intersections that close together where stoplights will just stop up everything and jam it up so that's a really good city skylines traffic tip do not put your intersections too close together. I, I, I think if you look back at my old videos, um, my old Sports Monkey <laughs> Xbox One videos, you're gonna see that I did that all the time. So what we're doing next is we are going to create a grid. Now, you're gonna say like, why? Yeah, I know that's gonna be your number one answer. Why in the world are you creating the grid when you told us not to? Well, for the neighborhood area, well, this is going to be our industrial area, but for industrial and our neighborhoods, just to start off, because we don't want to waste money on power lines when we really don't have any extra money. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, we're at $56,480. But I guess my point is, is early on in the game, yes, everything is going to be very grid-like because you're trying to conserve the amount of water pipes you use and the conserve the amount, um, number of you know electric power lines that you're going to use so right now we're just creating a basic grid just so that you know we can keep everything very tightly compact and not waste money so over here um i'm i did create an additional 
off-ramp for our industry. Now, we placed industry over here because, well, at the bottom, we'll call it the bottom part of our city because there is highway access. But I did want that additional on and off, well, on and off, well, no, that additional on-ramp, I did want that there so that, you know, the trucks coming in of our city is not jamming up our main road. So good, now that we have that in place, we have our industry laid out. What we're gonna do next is you're gonna see that this terrain is going to be a problem. Now, if you have, if you're playing on the PC, you can press the down to force the down button. It's like force to ground. And you can see that the ground actually created around the road. And that's exactly what we wanted. Now, remember, I already mentioned this like five minutes ago, but we do not have a terrain editing tool. So eventually, when we do unlock it with 1500 citizens, we can do some terrain editing. And as you can see, there is some tearing into the ground. Yeah, you could you could definitely see it. It is kind of annoying, but again, we're this is a map and it's uneven, but you know, we're gonna roll with the punches. And as you can see there, there is a tiny bridge. Yeah, that does not look good. But when you force it to the ground, guess what? The ground is gonna level up and everything's gonna flatten out. It's a really cool tool to be able to do that in city skylines. It actually is really helpful to be honest with you to be able to do that so this is where our residential is going to be we just we do want to expand it out a little bit bigger and um you know just try to maintain the same spacing again i know the grids i know you're i know but as we keep building our city we are going to get away from the grids but initially we're just in survival mode just trying to make sure we're actually making money in city skyline so that's why we're keeping everything grid like and very tight so as you can see here we are just going to continue our residential around our loop and you can see over here that it is 10 units so what we want to do to do so since we're not using mods for this we just want to make sure we're using the 10 unit measurement so that we can evenly create some of these bends and make it make just make it look just keep the form of our road layout and oh and as you can see i'm struggling to get to that 10 units but as you can see here, watch what happens next. So we're gonna go to the curved road tool and you can just see how much easier it is to connect all of these, um, you know, just roads together when you actually just, you know, you add that extra road to that was, you know, kind of using, we, we used the additional gravel roads, the 10 unit roads, just to kind of guide our curve. And so everything, we're gonna do the same thing for our outer layer just by 10 units and 10 units. So that's that's something to keep in mind, you know, just you know, use other roads as guides and stops and whatnot. So, you know, basically we're just keeping the symmetry of the right hand turn. And so far, everything is looking really, really good. I'm really happy with the way things are going so far. So just as a reminder, I just wanna let you know that the industry is gonna go back here. There is the city skylines highway that brings people in and out of our city. And we want that road access. And as you can see here, there is our in and out of our city. And overall, this is a really good start to our city skyline city. So what's next? Well, you have electricity and water that you need to bring to your city skyline city. So the very first thing I do wanna go over is some of our power options we have a free wall gate which i honestly have no clue what that is the next we have a coal power plant which has an output of 40 megawatts which that's pretty decent that's actually really decent because if we go over to the wind turbine itself you're going to notice that it does not produce even close to the same amount of power. So you're going to see that wind turbines only produce about eight megawatts of power. Yeah, that's actually not that much. So I prefer the coal power plant. And what I want to do next is I actually want a place to put all of our utilities. So I do want to drag a road down over here and we're going to tuck it in the corner. So you, welcome to our new town. Here is our power coal power plant. <laughs> Oh, ugh. in hindsight, guys, in hindsight, yikes, we're big yikes, really big yikes. <laughs> but, um, you know, this the city skylines entrance isn't necessarily about beauty, but it's more about functionality. So let's get going with our power plant. We know exactly where we want to place it and we're going to place it right here. 
Now what you're gonna see here is a red or orange circle depending on your eyeballs and that is going to be for the noise and pollution created from the power plant itself. So be very careful when you're placing it down. You don't want to put it in a residential area where people are going to get sick. So now the next thing you're going to notice, we place down the power plant and you're going to notice this blue ring where the arrow is. That is where all, that is the radius of power that is given off. So if we build a, you know, a residential area next to it, it will have power. If we build a commercial area next to it, it will have power. So anyways, that's where the power lines come in and we will shortly get to that. So the next thing before we get into the power lines is we want to build a fresh water, fresh water in our city. So we have two options. We have a water pumping station, which that's a part of the city skylines base game. Yeah. If you don't have any other of the DLCs, you can place this pump and it will suck up fresh water. And it's, it's a nice feature to have, but the problem is, is you're going to have pipes run in some maps. Those pipes will run forever and ever. Now I like using the water tower. It is a thousand dollars more expensive at $3,500 versus the 2,500 from the water pump. But I like the, the water tower because again, I don't like placing the pipes and wasting pipes. And then you have to get, make sure it has electricity. It's just overall a very messy process. So I'd like to place down the water tower right there in the middle of our residential. Well, I should say in sort of in the middle of our town. Now, eventually as time goes on, you know, you could place it there in the very entrance. I just don't like it. But for the time being, we can always move these water towers later on. Right now, everything is based on on convenience of the map and just making sure your city skyline city starts off at the right pace so i know every single person in city skylines knows that how to pipe a city so i'm just going to speed this up times three because you don't need to see another city skylines youtuber uh pipe up a city but what you're going to see is all of the pipes in blue mean means that that area does have water utility also do not forget to connect the water tower to the pipes because if you don't, well, guess what? Your city will not have water. So now that we have that in place, we are going to use the power line. So instead of putting the ugly power lines along that parallel road, what we're gonna do is place the ugly power lines in the middle between our on and off roads. They're not on and off ramp, but it is on and off road. So now that we have, now that we've made sure that our water tower has power, what we need to do next is actually very, very, very simple. We need to make sure that the rest of our city skylines town is going to have power everywhere else. So we're going to create like a plus sign of power lines. So that means our industrial area will have power, our residential area will have power, and then anything almost along our main road strip will have power. That's because if we don't have power lines, our cities will not have power. I know, common sense sports monkey. So now that we have that in place, we have our power, we have our fresh water, we're gonna start off with some of the zoning. So our zoning technique is twofold. We have two parts. So remember, we want to put industrial. I, I don't know. For the third time, I'm tracking this. For the third time, we want to put industry near our highway so we can create an on and off ramp for the traffic to get out. But the very first thing we're going to focus on is the commercial building. And now commercial buildings wise, we do have a few different options. We can fill something. We can use the marquee tool and I'll just show you what real quick. I'm going to use the marquee tool for this. I'll show you what the fill tool is later, but the marquee tool is you can actually choose how many squares or tiles or however big you want a building. If it's a two by four or a four by four or a one by four, you know, you can use the marquee tool to create different buildings and you can also delete them. But for the time being, we are going to fill, not fill, I guess, use the marquee tool and put commercial four by four along the, in the, basically our main road, our main strip. Now we're keeping it near those power lines for, oh, and that did not work. So yeah, we do not want to put, see that blue tile. We don't want to put those there because we won't have 
um, electricity, basically. We, we don't, our power grid only stays around buildings that already are built and the power line. So we're going to build our industrial area in, in a very similar spot. Because again, like I mentioned, if you do not have any buildings near there or power lines, that building will go without power and then that building will die off and then you'll be, well, you'll be a little upset. So what we're doing is we're using the fill tool. The fill tool is very cool and you can just place it down. You can see everything in yellow, then left click and then it fills it all in. Once, if you wanna get rid of it, right click it and then it then the, everything you filled in goes away. So we're gonna keep that industry filled in for the time being. Obviously, we're gonna need way more as time goes on. We're gonna fill that in eventually, like you can see right there. Eventually, all that will be filled in as our city keeps progressing. So 20 minutes in, guys. We haven't even started building our city, but we're almost there. We're almost there. So right now, we're filling in more residential and Again, what I'm doing over here is I'm creating a, a gap, a two tile or two, you know, it's just a very smidget. It's a very tiny gap that we're going to place a path. And the, we don't have paths yet in our city, Skyline City, but eventually we will once we reach a tiny town. But those paths are going to be amazing because we want people to walk to work, walk to the commercial. We want them to be able to walk around town and not be so dependent on driving everywhere, which Sims in general in this game, they don't drive everywhere. If you make a bike path, if you do anything, like if you do add transportation, they're more likely to walk or take some sort of transportation other than a car. So, so far, so good. This is our city skylines layout so far. I think we're ready to get started. And I actually really do like the way everything has turned out so far. So this is a really, really good start. So before we start anything, Mr. Mayor, Ryan Fitzpatrick would actually like to change the name of our city. So what we'll do is we'll go down to at the bottom of the screen, hit that information button. Looks like an I and it's green. And we are going to name our new city Bayview Heights. So welcome to Bayview Heights. Make sure you press the enter button so that way it saves and we are at Bayview Heights. So what we're gonna do next is we are actually going to start the, we're actually gonna start playing. So let's actually start playing and get going. So at the bottom left of the screen, we're gonna hit the play button. And as you can see, our residential is growing. Yeah, well, that's because at the bottom of the screen, there is what's called a residential demand. And then at the bottom left of the screen, you're also gonna notice that there are three blue arrows filled in. That means I'm speeding up the, just, just how fast City Skylines is playing. And then on the screen in front of you, oh no, we forgot something. The sewage treatment, as you can see there, we have the water availability, but we don't have sewage treatment. We forgot that. I mean, I think when you're playing, that kind of does happen. So you can use a water drain pipe, which is, you know, basically any disgusting waste. You can plop it right there on the river or lake or any body of water and all of your waste will go out. But if you have the city skyline sunset Harbor DLC, yeah, how do you like that? That is called a keyword in YouTube phrases. You can actually use the inland water treatment plant, which I prefer. I'm going to plop that right next to our amazing power plant. I think it's a good spot for it. And as you can see, there is purple, which is pollution, but there's nothing really around it to pollute. And then there's also the noise from the actual building itself. So make sure you do connect that to your pipe grid. So now let's resume the simulation. And as you can see, as time quickly gone on that, you know, citizens are now happy that they have water sewage. So basically we have sewage and we have sewers. Congratulations, but we do have fresh water. So right now you're going to notice we are negative a lot of money, negative $1,200. So let me pause this real quick. So what we're waiting for next is while we're losing money, we have to go to level up and we have to hit a milestone called the little Hamlet. So the little Hamlet, once we get it, is you get your taxes, you get your loans, your garbage, healthcare, and a couple other options. I think education was also the last one for an elementary school. So we we have a goal. We have 480 citizens we need to get to and to unlock that. Now, 
We're losing money, but don't worry. Again, our our simulation is going at three speed, so it is going faster than the average simulation. But as you can see, our town is starting to actually build. By the way, those trees are getting very obnoxious. We were very close to getting rid of those trees. So now that our town, we have everything in place it, and it is growing extremely fast. What we're gonna do is we are going to fill in more residential because we know that future demand is coming. Now I'm not gonna build on top of that rock because again, for the fourth time, we do not have the terrain editing tool and I cannot delete it just yet. I mean, I guess, again, you can hypothetically bulldoze it, but I'm not here to bulldoze, you know, I'm not here to bulldoze the entire map and all the trees and stuff like that. So now that we have that in place, what we're gonna do next is we do need to get more residents in our city. So while, since we still have a few thousand dollars left, I do want to expand and make sure that is 10 units. And I do want to expand our residential area just to make sure that, you know, for any future growth of our city, you know, make sure we hit that milestone essentially. So I did add an extra layer of the residential area. I did pipe it up and we're getting closer and closer. We're at 365. We're almost to our first milestone, but let's just keep adding. You know, the, the main name of the game is keep your city skyline city growing and that's what we're doing. And now you can see we're actually making money because hey, we have taxpayers, we have 388 residents, we are now making money. So that, that scare of being negative money for like two minutes, that didn't last very long. You know, originally when I was playing, that scared the crap out of me, just to be honest with you. I was like, oh no, I'm never gonna make money. Yeah, eventually that does happen. So what I'm gonna do, start to do is instead of adding another layer, I am gonna fill in our current residential just to add more residential, just filled in using the marquee green residential demand. And oh, there we go. We finally succeeded as a little Hamlet. And like I mentioned before, as I already went over this, we have a landfill, we have an elementary school, and we have a medical clinic. So we are gonna go into those um, you know, to those services to make sure our city is properly serviced and where citizens aren't going to die or get sick. But the very first thing you need to do is go to your budget. And as you're going to see here, once we unlock that, that first milestone, you're going to see that our electricity is at 40 megawatts. So go back to that budget. We are going to lower our budget of our electricity or wow, of our coal power plant and we're gonna lower it down and you're gonna see that it's down to 25%. So we lower the budget, save money on the budget, and you can see we're only using 13 out of 25 megawatts. So we're saving money. Early on, this is a good tactic to use just to save money. Then the next one is raising your taxes to 12% for residential, commercial, and industrial. Make sure all of your taxes are raised to that high and that's that way you can maximize your income. 12% is the highest it'll go before resident. You know, if you go to 13 or 14, residents will start crying and be like, oh, it's too much. Oh, too, I don't want to live here. And people will move out and it will create a massive headache. So on the screen in front of you, you're going to notice that we do have some demand for our industry and we're just going to fill that in really quick. So the way I will say the way industry works is I, or all of how all of these work is that the residential demand is number one for your city. The next is industrial. So industrial is creating goods for the commercial building. So the commercial buildings are blue. So if you don't have anything in industry, you won't have, you'll have commercial buildings that don't have any goods or services. So they all obviously go get tied hand in hand and, you know, just, that's just something how, that's how city skylines works. So, you know, if you residential, commercial, industrial, and so on. So the very first service I want to bring to our city is going to be healthcare. And you're going to see we have no six citizens yet, but well, that's going to change as time goes on, our city gets bigger, you know, things are going to, you know, we're going to need more services. So this is what's called a medical clinic. Right now, it's our only option. So, I mean, well, we are forced to create a medical clinic. So we're gonna put it on that main road. So we're gonna click on the medical clinic and my God, these trees are just in the, oh God, I just, super annoying. 
Anyway, so here's our medical clinic. You can see that it can handle up to 100 patients. I'm using the Move It mod just to move these trees out of the way so you guys can see the medical clinic. But there's a, it can handle up to 100 patients, $400 a week, and eight total ambulances used. You actually have three different ambulance options that you can choose from. Um, choose what you want. I just keep it normally the same. But that's just me. I don't know. So that that is how you get medical coverage in your city, Skyline City, at a medical clinic. I know that's simple, but some people don't know how to do it. So the next thing we are going to build up, well, not build, but add service-wise is an elementary school. So you're going to see that we have no high school students eligible, but we do have elementary students eligible. We have 141, and right now we don't have a school at all. We are 100% not educated. That's actually, oh my God. It's actually amazing when you think about it. Nobody is educated in the city. So how are they making breakfast and how are that? I don't know. Anyways, so we're going to move that map over. We are going to, so again, for the fifth time, there is no terrain editing. So we are just going to place down at the elementary school, just place it down in an area where, you know what, we're eventually going to move it anyway. So we're going to just place it down there. Like I mentioned, it's going to get moved eventually. It's just, we'll get, to, we'll get there guys. That's all I'm saying. So the elementary student school, you can see that we have 80 students. Then you can see at the bottom, the entire city has 101 students. Well, remember our city is very small. So eventually you're going to see the schools fill up and you're going to need to build more schools. So now we have a problem here. Oh no. Alert, alert, alert. What is that? That's a trash can. Oh no. Like what is going on? We have a trash can. Well, that is the garbage service. And oh my God, it's popping up everywhere. Oh, look at our industrial area. What a trash. Ooh, that is, that is definitely going places. So at the bottom of the screen, we need to create a landfill. And you can see right there, we have a landfill and a recycling plant. I don't think the recycling plants do as good of a job as the landfills themselves. But what we're going to do is I want to create an additional road just off this, you know, just off of over here and place it right along the highway. So remember when I said, welcome to our new town. You're going to see a power plant, a coal power plant. Well, now you're going to welcome to the town. You're going to see a coal power plant and a landfill. <laughs> oh my God. Please, if in the comment section below, if you find that ugly or gross, please let me know. So here is our landfill. You're going to see a lot of garbage trucks leave it. They do create a lot of traffic. There's 15 garbage trucks per landfill. The landfill can fill in, so that is not good, but you do have three different garbage truck options, which is really, really nice if you want to choose it, but it is $160 a week. And as you can see, all of those popping up, all the garbage issues, they will be taken care of in a matter of seconds. You can see on the screen, it's already, look at that. It's already gone. It's already, it's already gone. So we already handle it. So what's next? So this is, whoa, this building, we have pennies, not Denny's. It's pennies. Oh my God. Uh, and then it says not enough workers. So how do we solve this problem of not enough workers? Well, what you're going to see is at the bottom of the screen, we have a massive demand for residential, like holy cow, we have a huge demand. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep filling in our residential demand and, or while well, our residential area. And just to make sure that, you know, we have people moving in, we're trying to hit that next milestone and you know, it just, just something we have to do is add more residential and that's that's the game plan. That is the name of the game. As you can tell right now, we have everything we can build up for the time being. We have our garbage, we have our healthcare, we have our education. So we have every, oh, as I was about to talk about our next milestone, we hit it. We hit a worthy village. Congratulations, guys. I mean, in a matter of 30 minutes, we have a worthy village where we unlock the tile. We have a second loan. We have districts, we have policies. Then we have emergency services, police department, unique buildings. I think one of the best parts is we now have the city skylines industries unlocked. Well, at least two of them. We have the forest industry and agriculture. So forest is forest and agriculture is farming. Let's just put that out there really quick. So we do have a few other things. You can see the buildings we unlocked. It is a firehouse, police. So we do have, now we have additional services we do need to add to our city skyline, city of Bayview Heights. Awesome job so far. So what we're going to do next is we are going to add those services to make sure our city skyline city, well, can handle anything that starts on fire. Yeah, I know. 
So what you can see on the screen, it's just like the healthcare is everything in green attached to that main road will have fire coverage. So that's just something to keep in mind when your city's bigger, you know, it's a very limited spot, but we are going to place it in our industrial area, which industry has a higher percentile of starting on fire in city skylines. There's our firehouse. Wow. $560 a week. That seems cheap. We have three different fire truck options. It looks honestly, it works out. It works really well. So now that we have our fire service, we, we, we will not have fires. Well, that's a lie. I think if anybody's ever watched city planners play, there are some cities on in city planner plays that just literally start on fire forever. Like, I don't know. He loses entire cities due to fires. So what's next is the police service. Same thing with the fire service. You're going to see if you put it on a main road, you can see everything highlighted in green will be protected by the police. And so what we're going to do is we are going to place the police station on one of the main roads. Now I'm going to place it there. You're going to be like, well, why in the world did you place it there? Eventually we, we might move it, but it's central to the city. So that means, you know, police cars can go literally everywhere. And the very last thing, um, I'm just looking through the list of, you know, what we got with the worthy village, just making sure we have everything. We don't need a high capacity high school yet because well, we only have a thousand people. So, <laughs> Yeah, we don't have much. So our next goal is to hit that tiny town. That's going to be our goal to finish up for today is just to get those residents in place. And now we, we have, oh God, we, we need like basically, we're only at 1,028. Oh, wait a second. Okay, we had a new problem come across the screen. You're going to see that electric power. And that means the sims need power and right now if we go to our electric panel view you're going to notice that we are using 26 here let me move that to the center 27 megawatts and we're only producing 25 but sports monkey what happened our coal power plant can go up to 40. well what we're going to do is move that budget back up to 90 percent now we could put it a little bit higher but you could do whatever you want but now you're going to see eventually it does take a couple seconds, I guess, for the power, the coal power plant to get its engines rolling. But eventually you can see the power will go away and you can see that we're producing 32 megawatts of power and we are only consuming 27. I think at this point, though, it'd probably be safe to say we should. Yeah, we're using a lot of power and we're expanding really, really quickly. I think it would just be smart just to bump it up to 100 percent just to get the full 40. So then this way we don't have to change it in like two seconds. Anyways, we are up to 1,064 people. So what we're going to do next is we are going to expand our residential area. So make sure I'm going to speed this up a little bit because you already saw it during this build, but just keep expanding that grid and just making sure that everybody, there you go. See, you can see that grid is just looking perfect and we're expanding it, keeping everything just kind of separate and kind of not separate. And yeah, we're just making sure that everything's not scrunched together and just expanding out the grid and just filling it in. Again, we only need about 400 more citizens now. And oop, there's, yeah, that was our elementary school. But this should be enough space for the time being. And it probably will be. We're just waiting for everything to fill in and level up. And so far, so good. Now, we do want to add in, we do have some commercial demand. That is the blue. We're going to add that to our main road. Well, our main roads because we have a one way in and one way out. And apparently, I did mess up and not put a divide there for a path. But we'll fix that later. I'm not perfect at this game. Anybody who says they're perfect in City Skylines, well, they're fooling you. <laughs> Anyway, so now that we, we are filling in some of the commercial in, and I'm using the marquee tool, just filling in some of the you know residential, well, not residential, but filling in some of the zoning for some of these buildings. And overall, we're just waiting and waiting, waiting. We have 300 more to go, but again, you know, let's speed this up. Yeah, I sped it back up. The simulation times 100%. Everything is going to be filling in. We don't have this too. We don't have too much time to waste, to be honest with you guys. Like, I don't want to keep you guys here all day while we're waiting for now 200 residents, but everything you can see is filling in 
perfectly. Like I'm really happy about this. So while we're waiting for everything to fill in, I did want to speed up the, well, I already sped up the simulation, but I wanted to expand our industrial area. Just fill that in, use that marquee tool because eventually we are going to have that demand and we, our city will need it. So now that we're pretty much, we're pretty much at 1500, we're waiting for everything to fill in. Guys, if you guys feel like this tutorial, City Skylines, how to build your city tutorial help you out, please let me know. Please leave a comment in the comment section below and hit that like button. We're almost at a tiny town. We are almost, almost, almost there. And I'm just very excited to share this Bay Bayview Heights. We have our Ryan Fitzpatrick mayor that created a wonderful template for you to start your city, Skyline City. And there you go. We have a tiny town. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so guys, please let me know. To next video, we will be digging more into a residential. Well, not residential, but we're going to be digging more into our, you know, our services and our, you know, just basically our industry. Thank you guys for watching.